Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. Painting landscapes is simpler than you may think, as long as you focus on the big picture, big shapes, the grounds, rather than details and objects. Let me go with you through seven do's and don'ts of painting landscapes that show what to focus on to have a successful piece of art in your hands at the end. I will be using these two paintings as an example. The successful version is available in real time on my Patreon, so if you want to paint along and learn more, please find me there. The first thing we usually start with when painting landscapes is the sky. Unless your landscape is all about the sky and the sky takes over a half of your painting, do not overcomplicate it. Do not spend more than a few minutes on painting the sky. It took me twice as long to paint the sky on the left than on the right. I would never use anything darker than value 4 at best 5 for the sky unless it is a stormy or night sky. I would also recommend not using any granulating paints such as ultramarine for the sky. It makes it look like a textured surface rather than atmosphere. When you paint sky, I would recommend pre-wetting the surface of the paper first. It will prepare the paper to receive the paint and will help to avoid unwanted sharp edges. Also, it's best to use watery light in value mixtures of warm and cool hues. But the most important part is to make sure that the colors mix on their own on the paper and move towards the bottom of the paper under the force of gravity. This will create softness and glowing effect in the sky. When we paint watercolor, we usually do it in layers, from light to dark. Many say that first wash is there to get rid of the white of the paper, but not really. You need to be mindful, but of course have fun with it, it's not a brain surgery. When you do your first wash, do not use a single tonal value all over. And especially do not make the tonal value too dark, as it will force you into darks instead of middle values for your second wash, and the sense of light will be gone forever. Also, do not use random colors. Remember, the first wash is there to set the undertone, the overall temperature and color harmony for your painting. The first wash truly matters. Make it count. Try to achieve the depth from the get-go. Vary your values ever so slightly in the range of 0 to 5. Be mindful of the areas that will stay as the first wash, for example, the sky and the foreground. If you start messing with your light values, it will instantly look overworked, messy and dry. Try not to do any more layers wet on dry in the first wash. Always make use of water properties of watercolor, especially for the first wash as it is usually 70% water and only 30% paint in the mixture. In other words, your mixtures are usually very watery and it is your friend. Use gravity, blending, mixing and diluting if necessary on the paper. I show how to do all these techniques in my Patreon in full demo in a very detailed way, how much water I use, how much paint I use, what to do first and next, how I dilute and things like that. If you feel like you're struggling with these things, please find me there, I'm sure it will help. Obviously, these are very general suggestions. Let's look at each ground separately. The background. The worst mistake when you paint the background is to overdo it, so do not fidget with it, make it as simple as possible. It is there just to set the scene. Do not use dark values for the background, sharp edges and contrasts. It will bring it forward too much. Do not go over the background too many times, it will be overworked and too detailed. 
it is crucial to treat the background as the background. It needs to be secondary and out of focus. So it is the best if you paint it wet on wet. It will give you soft edges and suggest a layer of atmosphere and therefore the feel of distance between you and the far away objects. Also, it is important to use cooler hues. In other words, blues and muted tones. This will also push it back. Remember the phrase blue mountains? This is because they are far away, not because they are actually made of blue rocks. Now the middle ground. Try not to divide visually the background and the middle ground. Don't do sharp contrasts in values between the background and the middle ground. Preserve it only to the focal area in your painting. Also, avoid painting wet on dry. In other words, paint the background, dry it and start painting the middle ground wet on dry. And this will create sharp edges between the grounds, which is not recommended. This will divide your painting and destroy the unity, the flow in your painting. If you think about it, there is no sharp definition between these two in real life. Most of the time you lose sight where the ground starts and the middle ground finishes. You need to create a gradual transition from soft mellow background to contrasty middle ground. Make sure there are tonal value connections. There are some areas of middle ground where you paint it wet on wet to lose edges. Also melt the cooler tones of the background into warmer tones of the middle ground. It will create a seamless pathway for the viewer's eye to travel through the painting. Another important aspect to remember is not to overwork your middle ground. I know the middle ground is the most crucial part of your painting, so it is not an easy thing to do. Actually, the most of the artists say that this is the area where they struggle and sweat the most. You are not alone here at all. This is the area where you cannot say, oh, it's just a backdrop, I'll do a few brush marks and it's fresh and it's done. No. This is where you put all your might and strength in. This is where you show your skills as an artist. The variety of edges, the variety of hues and tones, the dynamics of light and atmosphere. But no matter how complicated your middle ground is, you have to make a brush mark and let it be. So do not do layer after layer after layer wet and dry each time with a milky consistency mixture and very slight variation in tonal values. Layers like that are still transparent enough to show multiple goes, but not fluid enough to make it seamless. And this is what ruins the freshness. Do not paint too many details and also do not leave too many small areas of the first wash to shine through the wash. This is usually happens when the brush is too small for the shape you are painting. All of this will lead to busy and bitsy and messy painting. Middle ground is your focal area, the center stage. You have to reflect it in the way you paint it. Make sure you use full range of values and there is a good contrast to show the light. Also, make sure there is a variety of edges to suggest the atmosphere, the air in your painting. If you paint all wet and dry with sharp edges, your middle ground will look airless and dry. So remember to paint some areas wet on wet. Also, the details. Middle ground definitely needs details, but the right amount of it. If you look at the painting and think, hmm, I don't see what else I can do to it, but your hand is still reaching to paint, stop it. Stop it right there. Another important thing. 
if you need to adjust something in your middle value, you can do it. It is a myth that you cannot fix watercolor. But remember to do it wet on wet. You can do anything as long as the wash is still wet. The foreground. The foreground has the only purpose in your painting is to lead the viewer's eye into the painting. But you can't generalize it too much. Do not do random marks and splatters of random colors or salt effect or granulation in the foreground if it doesn't make sense and it doesn't suggest or make an impression of a real life thing such as a stone or flower or things like that. It will look just like a splatter or a mark from a salt or granulation on the paper. If the foreground has shadows, they need to follow the sun and perspective. So don't do odd shapes and angles for your shadows. Otherwise the foreground will look distorted. Another aspect. Do not make the foreground exactly like you paint the middle ground. It needs to look like something that is in the corner of your eyesight. You look through it, but not at it. Use the foreground as a tool to lead the eye into the painting. Make sure there is a good gradient from light to dark to suggest the depth, particularly for the ground. It needs to be slightly lighter close to the horizon and slightly darker to the very foreground. If it's a sunny day and there are shadows, have at least two steps difference between the values in shadows. And don't forget to soften some of the edges. It will emphasize the sense of light. And my last suggestion. Do not aim to make a watercolor painting of a scene. Do your own impression of the reality. Your painting has to have a feel of an opening in the wall into the nature, not just a pretty picture. Hope it was informative and shed some light on the topic. Don't forget the thumbs up version is available on my Patreon in real time. So if you need more information, please click on the icon in the top right corner and it will take you to my Patreon page. If you want to see do's and don'ts of painting a streetscape, the link also will be in this corner and in the description down below. This is all for today. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!